part of most people. No matter what, no matter how accurate it is to what you personally think, as soon as it feels uncomfortable, which is that point where we're starting to get you thinking right, you move yourself out of the most people category. So we need to make sure that you guys are entering into your head. You're seeing what you think. And you're committing to that. The two primary tools that I'm going to use is think, pair, share, which means first I tell you to stop and take a moment and think about it yourself. Then I tell you, talk to your neighbor. That's the pair. And then, as a class, we bring up some of the ideas. And that's where we make sure that if you and your neighbor both have absolutely no idea and talking with each other still leaves you with absolutely no idea, there is that connection back to authority and person who can tell you this is right. Even though just being told this is right does nothing to help you unless you've first done the analysis to understand that you didn't think that way already. Remember when we do think pair shares that to make your conversation with the other person productive, I really want you to search for that appeal to authority. Trace all the way back. Why do you think this? So if I say, does getting shot with a bullet hurt? All you guys can say yes. But why do you think that? Do you have a reason for believing that getting shot with a bullet hurts? Most of you have seen it happen on TV or in movies, but you've also seen sound in space on TV and in movies. <laughs> so maybe getting shot with a bullet's not so bad. Disclaimer, don't go get shot with a bullet. It really is bad, okay? Don't test this one for yourself by getting shot. This is just a really good place for me to safely say, all of you have pre-existing assumptions. Most of you have the appeal to authority right at the front. Getting shot with a bullet hurts because other people have said getting shot with a bullet hurts. Now some of you have gotten shot with a bullet and you are that other person now and your appeal to authority is really dang good. I got shot, it hurt. Personal experience is a great place to start from. Now unfortunately sometimes I'm gonna have to tell you yes that's your personal experience but the way you translated it wasn't accurate. But we'll get to those when we get to those, and hopefully we've refined things by that point. The other thing that we're going to do is occasionally I will have you guys do one minute papers, which means I want you to sit down and write or type for a minute all of your thoughts. Initially, you're going to have your surface thoughts, and you're going to belt it out, and it's going to be a piece of cake. And then that last 30 seconds or 20 seconds is going to get really uncomfortable to try to finish. And the requirement is that you keep on writing for that whole time. You keep on delving into your thoughts. Find side paths if you desperately need to find something else to do. And I will collect those after. So if you typed it, make sure that you're emailing it to me. Otherwise, if you wrote it out on paper, then we'll do pass to the side, bring it up front. But today, we don't have heavy duty, significant material. Today, your actual material for this one day was just velocity, speed, acceleration, position. Very low level basic stuff that still can cause issues. So we'll get to that. But I really need to make sure that we've got Top Hat up and running. So I'm going to walk through what is on Top Hat. Now this is not a phenomenal, oh my god, the best program ever. I also have some problems with this. So don't feel bad about telling me your issues with the platform. It's just the solution I could find to make sure that we are grading you watching these videos somehow to give you that extra push to make sure you keep doing it for those of you who aren't motivated by just learning. So occasionally that pop-up happens. I shouldn't have dismissed it right away. It frequently tells me it can't connect even though I've got a great network connection at the time. Their servers must be crap. Um, but you should be able to get connected to the course. If you can't get to this point, then most likely you need to contact Top Hat. Come see me. There's a few things that maybe I can get you cleared up on. But for the most part, I'm going to have to send you to them. Yeah, I should go airplane mode or something, but I need to be able to get online. All right, so this is your landing page. You see the homework. 
Or, no, you start out in the lecture. This is where questions that I do during class will pop up. Seriously, email, go away. You click on the upper right, upper left, and you get this menu where you can go into homework. And it shows me I've got four things. But then you can see in the slider, there's only two things available. And this is one of those parts of it I don't like. Because if I try to make it streamlined and organized for the people on the computer, then it's terrible for the people on mobile. I'm going to go over computer as well in a moment. For the mobile, you need to click on the upper right hand corner. And then you can see the folder where I've got the daily tasks. And you can go in there and you can look at the daily tasks. Now, I did make a task for the very first day. I sent out the syllabus before the first day, so some very few people actually did that task at that time. Um, but for the most part, most of you didn't do those tasks before. And that's not me trying to train you, hey, go ahead and do the tasks late. That's just me trying to cram in a lot of extra material that there's nothing for us to do here to explore it in more depth. So the very first day, I just have you watching something that says, what the heck is physics? And there's so many ways you can define that, because physics is a giant field. Physics is the birthplace of all other sciences. Someone decided they were really interested in how combining things worked. And so they stopped being a physicist, and they started being a chemist. Now, this happened so far back that physics wasn't really defined as physics. And if you trace all of the history and everything back, eventually physics came out of philosophy, because that's just what people called scientists when science wasn't really a thing. And all that traces back to religion eventually, because that was the only people who could afford to sit around and just think. Everyone else was trying to live. But anyways, we're not here for history and philosophy and stuff. In this first task, the January 13 page, which doesn't want to load because, of course, um, there's two videos. The very first one is the absolute critical video to take to heart for this course. And it summarizes to say, watching videos by just staring at the screen leaves you an idiot. You can never learn anything just watching a video. You have to engage with the material. Now, this is from a guy who makes educational videos and has studied how educational videos work for people. So he makes his videos a little bit better. He starts out with the confusion. And he dwells on it long enough for you to sympathize with the confused people. Because he's trying to get you to see where, in your mind, you are also confused. Then he goes toward the right answer. A lot of the other videos we're going to get in this course aren't doing that. Because I'm relying on you guys to find your confusion yourself by engaging with the material. So Khan Academy is a great tool. They've got a lot of stuff about physics. They go into the math very heavily, which we don't need to do. But some people think analytically. They think with a mathematical mind. And that will be helpful for you. But if you just stare at a Khan Academy video, it's useless. Try to work ahead of him. Find the points where you get lost. Um, and then this guy gives one approach to saying what physics is. And everyone can ever give you a different one. But then you come down here to the discussion. This is an actual graded part. You have to participate in this. Um, I have it set to be anonymous. I can't tell who said what. So, Please, feel free to say anything. Quite a few people have expressed concern with this format. And I'm saying, give it a chance. But if it really doesn't look like it's working, come and talk to me. If enough of you don't like this, I have PowerPoint slides. I can go back to being more traditional. If I see in the results of talking with you guys and the exams that this just is not working, again, I can fall back to being more standard. This isn't something that I'm going to force on you whether it works or not. This is something that should work. But if I do it wrong, then it's useless. And all of that testing and research that says this works is in real courses, not overview courses. This is a survey course. We're going to cover a lot of material, and we're just going to cover. We're not going in depth. For covering, it might be that lecture is a whole lot better. Lovely, and it doesn't want to load it. Um, I went through the discussions and I responded to a lot of you. A side effect of having this be anonymous is apparently it even makes me anonymous. So you can't tell which responses are mine and which are theirs other than by the fact that I'm talking about how the course will go and you should come to my office hours. 
but I should have been putting something in there that said, hey, this is officially me, even though any of you could throw in that same thing. And so most likely, if you've only got one response, it was me. If someone else starts playing imposter, well, hopefully they're at least funny um, or tr accurate. But a lot of people have posted things. You guys can all see everything that everyone posted. And you can upvote things. So I will try to go back to this on occasion and look. And if a lot of you are upvoting something that I didn't respond to, then great, I'll get in there. Um, but overall, this is a terrible platform to try talking on from what I'm seeing so far. Which is why one of your homework questions is about trying to find a social engagement platform. I really do want you guys looking at more material than just what I am showing you. Um, so the university recently integrated Yellowdig into Blackboard Learn. I haven't worked with it before. It looks like it's a Facebook slash Instagram amalgamation. You can pin things, which is post things. Um, and then other people can comment on it and upvote it. And I can put grading on there to force you guys to come in and engage with it. And hopefully you guys would go out and find interesting physics videos and maybe even find like some guy doing a cool skateboarding trick and then demand that we talk about it in class. And that would be pretty awesome because then it's something that at least to some of you felt relevant. So I would like to use something like that. We could use Google Groups or Facebook or I don't know what else all is out there and works for this. Um, if we go off Yellowdig, then there's no way I can incorporate it as grading. And then it's just some of you who choose to participate will, which from what I've seen in other courses means essentially nobody will after the first week. Um, so I'm going to try to put this one up as a question to us right now, which unfortunately I don't get to look at my monitor while I'm showing you guys my phone. There we go. All right, so now it should be showing up in the lecture portion for everybody. And I'm going to be using this to ask questions of the whole class during class time. So if you haven't responded yet, give it a shot responding now. So we're going to leave this up for like 10 seconds. And everyone who's got this set up can do it. This particular one, I don't care that much about. So I'm not going to have you fill out by paper if you don't have this set up yet. Um, and you can see 71 have submitted. OK, that's a whole lot of the class. So we'll move on. Um, so I can cut off. Nobody can respond now. And then we can look at reports. And most of you haven't used Yellowdig. So apparently it's really, really new. Um, so overall, you guys don't want to engage very much. So that's cool. If that changes, great. We can do something. I'll look at putting together a way for us to talk. But for now, I will take that as that. And close that down. We don't need it anymore. And then get it out of my way. Um, this is one of the other things that I have available. And I really shouldn't show it on here, since that's my instructor view. General questions is another discussion type one. And it's set up anonymous. But this one's full anonymous. You guys can't see what the other people have asked. And I kind of wish that I didn't do it that way so that you guys could see the questions, because some people are asking good things here that they didn't in the other one. But this is meant to be something that I leave open all semester long, and I keep checking. And just whenever you have a question, a concern that you don't want to be personally accountable for, you can throw it on there. And I won't know who said it. So if you just want to rip me a new one because I did terrible in class that day, go for it. If you did horrible on the test and you think that I was wrong and you were right, Here's a place to vent. I don't mind. I would like to know what you guys are thinking so that I'm doing things as well as we can by you. The focus of this class is for you guys to learn. 
Okay, so any questions on Top Hat itself? So I'm trying to download the app and it won't download, but you said there's also a way to do it via text message? Yes, um, when I throw up a question or something, it will, there, we'll do ask. So it shows down here, this, um, is where you send the text message to. And then this is an example of what your text might look like. So you have to have that 4338 so that it goes to me and not to someone else using Top Hat. And then you say what your answer would be to what this poll was. No, I'm pretty sure that one stays for me for the whole course. That's the number because you're actually texting to the company and then it's this code that's sending it to me. Um, 315-636-0905. And I had meant to get... Bah. Okay. Later on I'll install something that lets me zoom in and point at things with arrows on the screen. But for now I didn't set that up. Yes? Do you know how to connect to the Vandal networks? Because I was thinking I had a good enough connection that I could get it, but it's not working. Um, I don't remember exactly how you set it up. I think you just go into Vandal Gold and you log in like you were on a university computer or going into Vandal Web. Yeah, I tried that. It used to be you had to go on a Vandal Guest first and authorize your MAC address, but I don't think it does that anymore. Is anyone familiar with setting up Vandal Gold? Okay, well, pop in on Vandal Guest. The password there is Go Vandals with capital G, capital V, and an exclamation at the end. Now, if you have concerns with the whole using Top Hat thing, come and talk to me. I can try to find some really cheap used devices that have internet connection that I lend out, or some burner phones that you can just do text messaging from that are prepaid or something. Or you can fill out a sheet of paper and Call that up after class every day. This isn't meant to be a punitive, oh, I can mark you down and give you an F. This is meant to be just motivate you to actually remember to pay attention to this class. Because if you're not doing the stuff out of class, you're going to fall behind really fast. Um, and a lot of you that expressed concern said that your concern was about uh, having taken an online course before, or doing a flipped class by somebody who was a lazy, can't say lots of other things about it, um, and it didn't go well for you. This is not at all an online course. The difference between this and an online course is with an online course, maybe there's a video conference, but mostly you're on your own. With a poorly flipped class, mostly you're on your own. The point of this one is, all of that lecture, all of that me saying exactly the same thing any other professor would tell you happens here with videos that you can watch over and over, with hints on other places to look. You do this to just get the raw, here is data dump. And maybe you're confused, that's okay because that's why we meet here. You come into this room and we clear up your confusion. That is what this space is for. So ask questions often. I don't have a specific timeline we must stick to other than letting you guys out of here at 1220. So in class, if you have questions, that's the focus. Now I will almost always have demonstrations that I've got set up so that we can investigate the material, but the primary idea is to make sure you guys understand things. So we go into the investigations when you think you've got a handle on it so that I can test if you do or not. That is essentially like homework. But normally with homework, it's either not graded, so you never get feedback where you write or not, or it is graded, but it takes so long to get back to you, that's no longer the material you're covering, you don't remember why you said that thing that was wrong, and the feedback isn't very useful. Do you have a question? Yeah, is there going to be any sort of schedule or all just based off the top hat thing and then 
I have an Excel that has the full schedule, so you can work ahead if you want to. I encourage that you don't. Um, but I'm revising that to make absolutely sure that I give you guys the material that's needed for the exams that I have written. So initially, I was going to give you that and just say, hey, it's going to get revised a lot during the first month. Don't take it as gospel yet. But then I ran into this. I decided, hey, this looks good. I got too busy setting all this stuff up, and I stopped making sure that was available for you guys. So I'm trying to polish it. I'm hoping by the end of this weekend, I've got the bare bones framework good enough that I can present it to you guys and promise it won't change a lot. So I'm trying to make sure that we are independent of this as much as possible. If you don't have this set up and you need the material, send me an email. I can respond and get you this. Also, there's the camera that I'm using to record the classes. I've mostly figured out what I'm doing. And I'm going to start making that available. So if you miss a class, you can still do that. But the format of what we're doing in here, if you weren't here, most likely that is relatively useless. Hopefully not, but I anticipate watching me drone and answer other people's questions won't be the most engaging because, again, we're back to that. If you just watch a video, it doesn't help you. Um, mostly they're graded that you do participate. Okay. Um, so like that discussion, you just have to say something. You don't have to say something right. Because everything that I do on here is you're still learning the material. So I just want to make sure that you are engaging in some way. Um, I'm going to start putting homework on there. Homework's not graded at all, not even for did you do it. The point of the homework is embedded within that homework is the questions I will be asking on the exam if you do the question version instead of the essay version. Um, and I will try to get that homework up for this week as quickly as I can today. Um, there will only be two homeworks for this next exam. And the exams are only half of a class period. They're about a half hour long. So again, if you guys have disability support services, extra time for exams, make sure you see me and we figure out how that works. The computer knows who you are and can slot points in. So I can tell by looking at who has points and not who has not responded at all. And if I looked when the first person responded, I could have figured out who they were. But I didn't. Is there a spot to look to see if we're getting participation points? Um, you guys should have a link for Gradebook as well. Possibly not on the mobile app. Um, but at the very least, if you go onto the web, you can look at a grade book, see what it's given you. Tell me if you think some of it's wrong. <clears throat> all right, I wanted to have all this up and loaded in tabs before you guys got here. But I spent too long monkeying around with the camera. Yes, thank you. I don't want a picture. All right, this is a nifty tool that I will be giving you guys in some of your daily tasks or homeworks. It's called Direct Measurement Videos. It is various videos, usually shot at high speed, where you can step through sometimes frame by frame, sometimes a few frames at a time. But the video itself is a roller coaster moving through. Now the topic today is velocity and acceleration. So what can I do? This is going to be a think pair share. So first you're going to think on your own, then you're going to be talking with somebody. What can I do within this to figure out how that cart is accelerating? How the entire roller coaster accelerates? So first, look at what's available and think. And of course, it all fails now.
well, awesome. It doesn't actually work. Okay, now talk with the other talk with your neighbor and I'm going to try getting this working on a different browser. Within a video where you can step through and you know what the frame rate is, how do you find the acceleration of a multi-car accelerator or roller coaster? Make sure both people participate. Don't just let them talk to you. OK. Quiet down. Now it's going to go to share. So who thinks they've got an approach to find acceleration of the cart? Okay, come up here. Take over the computer, and the rest of the class is going to help guide you through. They're going to give you ideas on what to do. I am going to be doing this a lot. As much as possible, I want you guys running what we're doing up here so that you have hands on. So you know it's not me doing sleight of hand, tricking things into working just right. If things fail, let's figure out why. Okay, so these move you forward and backward, one frame at a time. Yep. Well, kind of based on the video we were watching last night, um, on the graph of the statistics over time. I guess I should probably toss you this so you can talk to a boss. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> so based on the video that we watched last night, how they did distance over time to figure out what this way, you could use the uh, rail as part of like figuring out distance. Um, so we will like measure the time to do the connecting points for the rails. And then from there, kind of measure how long and how, or how quickly it takes for it to hit this next railing. Okay, now exactly where are you looking? I'm looking right here. Maybe I went a little bit too far ahead of time. Okay. So, you're looking at this spot on the rail. And yes. What other spot? What uh, the next on? notch on the left. or that part right there okay. and we could and how do you know if the cart is on that spot um, we could I mean we can even go f back and say from the point that the t front of the cart gets there okay is anyone good with this or suggestions or ideas I'd suggest maybe using the front wheel you know, that's a little easier to sell And as you get ideas, go ahead and pop up your hands, or we can even go to chaos. About right there. So you need to know 